people study leadership management they go to institutions and when i look at your journey it is just the love that is able to create generate leadership management all the skills naturally and that is the ingredient love that i can still smile laugh i need no titles no position names no nothing and i enjoy life हेलो दोस्तों मैं डॉक्टर योगेंद्र सिंह राठौड़ आप लोगों के लिए लाया हूँ इनर वेलनेस टाइप का अगला एपिसोड आज हमारे बीच बेहद इंस्पिरेशनल और स्पिरिचुअल पर्सनालिटी मौजूद हैं होशो के साथ इन्होंने बड़े करीब से काफ़ी सालों तक काम किया और अपनी विजडम अपने लाइफ लेसन से आज कई प्लेटफॉर्म्स के जरिए ये मिलियंस ऑफ लोगों को इंस्पायर कर रही हैं प्लीज़ वेलकम माँ आनंद शीला ऑन आर शो आई थैंक यू फॉर इन्वाइटिंग मी विथ सच gracious uh, introduction so ma'am how your spiritual journey started and what connected you to osho first thing my spiritual journey has not started okay because i never went looking for spirituality so you can say how did my love affair started with bhagwan okay yes you can tell that it is a short story On my second visit to him I fell in love backwards I could not stand up again I just fell 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 in love to the point where I forgot myself even previously you talked to me about it that your first meeting with uh, acharya rajneesh somehow it attracted you or deeply you got connected so what made you feel connected what was it there is no what or why it just was a happening and that happening was so profound there was no logic to it so at what moment you decided that uh, you're going to leave everything and you're going to be fully dedicated with his work second meeting okay when i was 21 years old my first meeting was 16 year old and i could not decide for my feelings then what was going on in me being so young but second meeting was crystal clear and i knew something that i cannot leave this man's fragrance and then one day I took my courage and went and asked him what is happening to me I only think of you only talk of you there is no discretion with whom I'm talking about you or what I feel about and he laughed he had a good laugh and then he says sila that is because you love me you are in love with me and little pause and then he said and i am in love with you <laughs> and that was the end of sheila what was the difference between your love towards him and his love towards you was there any difference oh you don't try to analyze whatever is there you just fully enjoy right if you analyze it's lost so then i think it is not even love if you right get the logic of it so when uh, you got actively engaged in building those communes and i think you had a big role there so how that leadership evolved inside you because i was in love with him what was happening around him I was able to grasp it, perceive it. And I would come up with small ideas. Bhagwan had moved from Woodland Bombay to Pune. 
and then in Pune Ashram began because thousands of people were coming to visit him and they have to be serviced. Right. Because they need toilets, they need water, they need food. They are visitors. Being a woman, these things I noticed quickly and I became a support for his then secretary, Mayog Lakshmi. Okay. Before I knew it, I knew things, what to do, how to do, etc. And I got more and more involved every day. And then Bhagwan had every morning 3,000 people in discos, three to 5,000 people. We were 2,500 people living in Pune Ashram in four small buildings in three different shifts. Uh, one goes to work, the other one comes in from the work like that. So we were very creative in that sense and uh, it was a mad crowd. We all loved him. And that madness to organize in a practical manner, I started picking up that part. Okay. And then comes suddenly, time Bhagwan says, we have to look for bigger ashram, bigger place. That time when you were managing for the U.S. thing. Yeah, when I took Bhagwan to U.S.A. <laughs> and somewhere, just sitting at his feet, with my head in his lap, correct steps came in the process and I didn't care what people thought, why thought, it worked, I did it. If now, you are now uh, around how much age? 75. 75 right now, so if you look back that 26 year old girl and the love she had for Rajneesh, so, are you able to comprehend anything? What was it that attached you with him? Was it his teachings or uh, what was it? Are you able to comprehend now? I fell in love. That's it. Complete packet. <laughs> there is not one element I can pull out or bring in. It was a complete packaging. And my success had something to do with understanding other people around him at that time, how they must feel. That recognition, because how I felt for him, I saw that same feeling in others. And I was not just tolerant of their feeling, I never felt jealous of it. Yes, I was about to ask that. Yeah, I wanted to share with them, Bhagwan. So what happened is, while we were building the city, Bhagwan is giving me instruction what and how I have to move forward. I did not hide anything from my team. And it was a collective effort. True. I held my team in my palm, in my heart. How many around, how many people were uh, there? The, the main were like 25 people. Main core. We were main 25, majority of them were the female, and there were few men who supported us. We were the, all the poles, all the pillars of. pillars of the institute. It was remarkable what stamina we had. I mean, I could not fathom where my energy was coming. It was simply the commitment. Right. Commitment of love. And commitment of love I have seen in my parents towards us children. Wow. So that subconscious experience was always there with me. That loyalty was always there, what I had felt in parents. 
so how was your parents perspective what was your parents perspective about this were they happy with this were they supporting you my father brought me himself to pakwan <laughs> <laughs> and he my father looks a bit like pakwan okay and pakwan looks like my father a bit often when my father would go walking somewhere we would get call the pakwan is walking alone should he be alone <laughs> Lovely. And I would tell that to Pakwan and he would have such a good laugh. One day my father was sitting on a snow-covered mountain in New York up as uh, New York state in Utica, completely naked, sitting on top of a mountain enjoying the sun. Some tourists must have seen him, photographed him. Okay. And then eventually it was a postcard. Somebody sends this postcard to Bhagwan and sends me same postcard with other letter saying Bhagwan will catch a cold without clothes on the mountain. Okay. I showed it to Bhagwan. We both had such a good laugh. <laughs> you and uh, i am so intrigued by your love with this you know creating leadership commitment loyalty your management skills everything is coming out of that uh, but i am still not able to understand what was the nature of this love uh, was it a romantic love fatherly love godly love matlab are you able everything to comprehend everything combination everything. whole package this is something unique i think no that is how it should be Okay. In love if you have to cut and divide it becomes destructive. True, true. And there is no reason to cut and divide when you accept it flowers into something magnificent. Look at my Bhagwan sitting all there. They are my Bhagwan now. It gives you inner freedom to share that love. with anybody and everybody but it's not necessary to have expectation to have conditions to have boundaries segmentation if you truly want to explore the full potential of love exactly i wish that more people get a chance to experience that love in totality because many time we just get a taste of fragmented love that we we categorize it and that's that's beautiful so once you guys shifted to us and then that rajneshpuram you guys built and uh, i saw wild wild country that has been uh, shown on netflix so in commune uh, w- what is an average do looks like in commune how you you guys used to live in commune it functioned it worked perfect just like a normal society or no, there were some more than normal society more than because we were already simplified our n- needs our okay we were not in conflict with one another we accepted each other's love for bhagwan yeah there was we one had common, a common basis and this common basis gave us tolerance for one another this tolerance we were there for one another so if somebody needed a help ten other people are offering it so it was very harmonious discrimination was not there people were in tune in a common place where they could unload their anxiety fears was at bhagwan's feet or unload in therapy groups okay or meditation groups so they had some places where they can move around in the commune only in commune within the commune 
and new ideas come to occupy monkey mind of the man. We had communes all over the world, so we created exchange program within the commune. Okay. There were so many positive aspects, so many ideas, but people are only focusing on scandal. So they will never find out. True, true. But I'm glad today we are doing few of those findings. So true, yes. We had a wonderful children's school. We had high school uh, children's also a school from gra uh, grammar school. Okay. And we had our own university for meditation purposes, etc. Okay. With Pukwan's guidance. I request all your viewers, please don't be ordinary. Right. And take a risk into finding out the creativity of this man. We called him Pukwan, and I love to call him Pukwan. And when I feel Romantic, beloved Pagwan. Oh, beautiful. And somebody today told me this Pagwan's death day today. Yes, today. today. It's such a big coincidence that today we are talking. Right. And I wasn't there. Yes. No worries. For me, whether he's alive or dead, makes no difference. I enjoyed him while he was alive, and I enjoy him today through his teachings, my memories of him, and the work we have done for him. Beautiful. Bhagwan will be Amar, always Amar, and we should not take his Amarness lightly. He's not a man to be discarded. He was a man of knowledge, period. Nobody can deny that. Right. He was a man of analysis, men who understood human nature. Even those who contradict him, even they accept this, that he was a man of logic, analysis. So, in that commune, if there was conflicts, or uh, because... Uh, so many cultures were there, so people from so many countries were there, so different cultures, so is there any legal system was there or just one love for Osho was enough for it or were there hierarchies, positions or it was completely uh, running harmoniously? One can say it was hierarchy, Bhagwan was the highest. Then comes Bhagwan's representative, his personal secretary. That was me. And we all were ambassadors of Bhagwan's teachings, which will create a major mess in the world. Right. Because every one of us understand word differently. It can be a same word. Yes. But I take one meaning from my experience of life or my being, you take another experience, he takes another. True. And when one stands on a position, it will be a mess. Right. True. I request people, don't interpret his words. Take his words in its face value. Don't think the way you understand is the ultimate. There are many other dimensions to understand him. And Pakwan was multi, multi, multi dimensional. Okay. His thought did not end on one point, his one thought gave a person to 
check out few other dimension. He was generous in his analysis. Right. He included everyone. And that you see it, he has t- spo- he's the only man who has spoken about all religions that exist. He was well read. There is no one else who has done that. A rare, rare, rare diamond. Why do you think that uh, that two faces are there, perception in the society? One perception is that those who like him, they like him madly. Then there are people who were against him and mostly they projected him as a sex guru. So where things went wrong, why do you think that perception of controversy was attached to him? About him being sex guru? The whole world is sex. Yes. <laughs> yes, otherwise Every they won't be there. Home, show me a home on this earth where sex doesn't exist. Or the sexuality is not prevalent. You talking about Bhagwan's Bhagwan being sex guru? He was never perverse. True. People call him sex guru because they themselves are perverse, and Bhagwan draws their attention to their lower mentality. It is people. They don't want to recognize their own deficit. Right. They put it on the other person's head. Right. I have never seen sex act in Radnishpuram or Punashram or my, my time with Bhagwan, which was perverse in any sense. Bhagwan told us, explained to us, educated us right. that sex should come from positive feelings of love. One should be grateful for that offering. It may be man or a female. Makes no difference. It should be out of respect and consensuous. Yes, that's important. Only with consensuous sexuality you can move forward with respect. Here, in most homes, small marriage certificate gives them the right to avoid consensuous. That's why there are many cases of marital rapes these days. Right. And that is human shame. If you engage in your perverseness, don't do it, please. If I don't talk in terms of pop and non-pop, but I tell you, here I must say, there is no bigger pop than dominance in sex. Okay. So, was it that reason because of which he was against marriages? He talked a lot about against having marriage. Exactly. And that's why he himself never married. Right. I am widow already for so many years. And I'm not married. Okay. Yeah. Lovers are okay. Physical need is okay. But. No one possesses me. I am an, my own master of freedom. So that entire wrong perception of Rajnishpuram that came out in wild, wild country. So how that happened? Why if the commune was harmonious, there was no sexual activities or something like that going on? Because in that movie, somehow they have given the perception that... Uh, non-social things were going on that were not acceptable to the society that's why they got triggered and they took you guys as a danger so what was the reality of that it's it was the same reality what exists today in america in republican states american courts have taken 
women's right for choice. How? They made abortion illegal to begin with. Republicans discriminate against blacks and white. They discriminate against the Asians and Americans. They discriminate against Mexicans and refugees. Discrimination is considered high on the list of American constitution these days. They tried that on red niches. 40 years back, it's the politician. Take a one look at this mafia boss Trump and you will know what happens in America. And nowadays, young people are supporting him. Where is their education? Where is their necessity to exercise freedom? He says he wants to tear up and burn the Constitution. This American Constitution, which was a sacred piece of paper, didn't support people like Pakwan. Right. And now, person like Trump wants to burn it so he can become autocrat. People have to start thinking for themselves. Right. And as Jesus says, do unto others what you do to yourself. Not you, you would not want things to be done wrong to you. Don't do it wrong to others. Even in name of politics. When that episode happened and uh, somehow you moved away and then later on the most of the blame was on you. So even uh, I was watching some clips where Osho was criticizing you. So when you moved away, what was your feeling when you made a decision that I want to leave the commune and you moved away? What triggered that? Why you moved away? My feeling was very clear. I was not ready to compromise my integrity. In what sense? Bhagwan, at time of uh, choosing me as a secretary, he had given me three jobs. Protect him, protect his commune, and protect his teachings. Okay. Then Bhagwan came in a bad company of his doctor and dentist who started experimenting on Bhagwan with drugs. Okay, because, he w because of his toothache, I think? It began as a toothache and backache. But medical science, anybody knows that you don't need gallons and gallons of laughing uh, gas to repair your tooth. People don't need Valiums to calm backaches. I write about this in my book, Don't Kill Him, with more detail now, a lot of details are forgotten from the moment these things were happening. So that book is available on Amazon? Yes. Uh, so we will put the link in the description. My autobiography, Don't Kill Him, okay. is available at Amazon and also by my own rules. Okay. Two books are there. Uh, two books are there. Okay. And I write my feelings very clearly in it. So when I could not do this and I was informed about by our local pharmacist L with prescription signed by this American doctor who supported this too. Because they were English doctors, they didn't have permission to practice medicine. I took that, I understood the issue I went straight to Pakwan 
And I said, Bhagwan, this is dangerous, what is happening. Right. 3,000 Valium on one prescription. If our whole community took Valiums, you won't need it. Right. Common sense says that to me. And so much laughing gas and few other narcotics and barbiturates. And Bhagwan simply said, Sila, you don't interfere, don't get involved. Okay. I cannot accept that because responsibility as a head of the community was on my shoulder. Responsibility to keep Bhagwan alive and safe was my commitment. Right. And his teachings, how can I not t- take care of it? And I fought with myself this feeling, but it was not possible to persuade Bhagwan on it. And U.S. government was looking for a problem within. So they can this is how they us. took it. Okay. So this is what... Now, how can I leave a man I love so after so many years? Right. Yeah. But I could not perform the job he expects for me to perform in it surrounding, then I have to give that position to somebody more capable than me. So... Then you left. I left and love was not my weakness. Love was my strength. And that same love came to my rescue when I was sad. You have to go, Sheila. There's no choice. So even in those moments, your love was intact? Intact. So, But still you were able to gain the strength to move away from him? I did. And I write about it also in the book. Not only that, I had to rebuild myself. I spent 39 months in prison. Okay, after that incident. I left Radnishpuram. Okay. Three months later, I was arrested. Even that thing hurt you because uh, I saw the clips that entire blame was shifted on you as if you were the one who master planned everything right. and you went to the prison. So uh, I want to know your mental state during the prison when you got to know that you have been blamed. And uh, I, I'm sure that you also must have seen that interview where uh, even Osho himself was saying that no, I didn't. In in the wild, wild country, they are showing a clip. I haven't seen the film. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have lived the film. <laughs> you know? Yes, you have lived. So what was your state in those moments? I had to go back in my own heart. It was an opportunity I took to test Bhagwan's teachings. Bhagwan's teaching is... Love, laughter, life, acceptance. If I have learned that, then I have learned to accept prison. Was there any bitterness in that moment that why this has been uh, any kind of uh, a victim? Did you feel like a victim? No. No? No, not even today. I was with Bhagwan from my own choice. I wanted to learn from him. He offered me a great opportunity. Right. I have no reason to pass the buck and complain and say he did it or she did it. You simply accept it. It has to be. With no hatred, no bitterness, nothing. No. Do you see bitterness in me? No, 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 no. So it means you tested the teachings and you came out of it successfully. I came out and say his teachings are golden. (laughs) <laughs> that was my firewalk in our 
tradition, people say you have to walk through the fire. Fire, yes, yes. No burns. You use the word you had to rebuild. What does it mean, rebuild? What, emotionally, financially, mentally, career-wise? Everything. I had to get back on my feet. I had left him without a single penny. And did he try to stop you? Did he made effort to no, stop no, you? No, 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 no. He, nobody tried to stop me. And I had three, four hundred people came to the airport to say goodbye. The book one says, Sila didn't say goodbye and all that. I even left my telephone number where I was going. So in case they need my anything, if they don't understand, they can contact me. But he cut all the nets around me that I can sink. But I was his disciple, <laughs> his trainee. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so you put all those teachings, you came out. Then after the prison, when you came out, uh, what kind of acceptance was there? Or were you feeling alone? And what kind of support you had? No, I had another crisis of US government. After I came out of prison, their plan was never to let me out of prison. And somehow existence created a situation which threw me out of the prison. And that was in prison law, you have a possibility to benefit prison, then you get some good days. And I painted the woman's unit in the place I was in by myself. I was given only one pin, this, uh, and one roller okay. without a stick. Okay. So I couldn't even reach the higher things. And I was allowed out of the, the room to do the common areas to paint it only when it is at mercy of the police person who was doing the shift. And I was a fine arts student I must have cut about 25 small, with a small brush and the door frames. I painted the whole unit and saved them 150,000 uh, painting cost. And that put me, that gave me 15 good days. They put me on a Christmas kick out. Okay. They brought me to 13th of December. And I was thrown out. And the manager of the prison didn't want any publicity. So he had not announced to anybody that I'm going to be out. And I was gone. So after that, you were out? I was out. Okay. But what? Did the U.S. government did try to get me back? Blame they on made you. Uh, another uh, case against me and put me in Interpol. So I was back to the status of uh, running. But who came to my rescue after journalists of the world who harassed me? all my life, two of them said to my lawyer, called him up and said, please tell Sheila to go underground. Something is being planned against Sheila here in U.S. courts. And these two journalist message reached me at that time, I was in Portugal, and uh, I always carried a return ticket. So I got in a bus, 
and came to Switzerland. I was Swiss citizen. Okay. And Swiss don't extradite their own. So this is how you completely came out right. of it. My life story is unbelievably beautiful and unbelievably not fantasy. Anybody would see those events as a tragic, but it's your perspective towards life that is seeing it as a blessing and beauty. And that's what has allowed me to survive. And I hold my head high. That's my title. <laughs> Lovely. I think uh, I would read your books to get Please in do. more de more details. I would love to know. I think I'll put it uh, in the description link as well so that more people would like to read. I'm sure about it. So right now, which teachings of Osho you are applying in your life uh, as a practice? Because you used to teach lots of meditations and so many things. So is there any ritual or practice you are applying? I don't do any ritual or practice. What I do, I work hard and I produce quality work. 100% or none. Last 34 years, I've been running two homes, Matru Sadhan, Bapu Sadhan, in honor of my parents and their love for us siblings. I work with uh, highly disturbed schizophrenia, borderline, aggression, depression, suicidal, uh, a whole palette of mental illnesses and psychological illnesses. And I am patient number one. <laughs> I say and deal with them the way I deal with myself. Love is important in my life. And what I notice in these people's life, they didn't have the fortune I had right. of love. So I fill their life with love at the same standard and same way. And that's the biggest medicine I offer them. Beautiful. I live with them just as they live with them. They share their rooms. I share my rooms. And I have train my team with the concept I have created, being there. This concept, my average team worker lives life with me for 20 years. Beautiful. And my uh, residents, they are also average 22 years, 20 years with me. So. In this journey, after all these things, did you ever uh, feel alone that you are running everything by yourself? So, do you ever feel makes lonely? It, easier. <laughs> it makes it easier. It makes it easier. Because I rely on myself. And I have a possibility to teach them this reliance. Because it requires a lot of strength and courage. Because generally society teaches us that we should have people around us to support. At the age of 75, you are fully active life. You are living in India, Switzerland. You are traveling with your uh, kids, I think. And you are traveling with all these people. Yeah, I have fun with them. So, but from where the strength is coming? Source care. Four small little alphabets. L-O-V-E. -E. Do you ever miss Osho? Or do you nah. miss those days? How can I miss? I talk about him every day. <laughs> the, 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 the physical presence. It was a beautiful physical presence. As such, I don't miss him in that sense because it has been all so many years now. But every time I see his photo, you know. Yeah, you keep sharing as well. Yeah. Almost daily you share it in your stories. So, do you still listen to his discourses? Uh, because these days, there are lots Not of available online. Not as a regular. Online. Okay. Whatever I feel, remember about his teachings, 
that is from my sleep during his discourses. <laughs> you are laughing, but I tell you, doctor, it is true. You will see many photos if they have not ripped them up. Right. I, I used to sit in a front row and I used to sleep. So you were learning subconsciously, you were learning in theta state mind. I guess. <laughs> he was planting it, everything in there. <laughs> so what is your association with Complete Osho International Foundation? Is Are you anyway connected to anybody? Do they try to contact you? How they perceive you? My association is with Bhagwan Shri Rajneesh. Yeah. My beloved Bhagwan. I have no other associations and I don't want it either. So do they ever try to contact you or how they perceive? Do you any From time to time, single person, individual comes or so. They're most welcome for coffee or have a lunch with me wherever I am. No issue. Do you follow any spiritual guru from the modern world after Osho? Uh, did you ever try to listen to anyone or something? Have I seen anyone as beautiful as Bhagwan <laughs> after him? No. Agar puri Osho ki life se kuch audience ko aap unke teachings dena chahein jo aapki life mein bhot prabhavit kiya jisne aapko impact kiya any three four teachings that you can share. That I do it. That's a chocolate that I prefer to offer the world. And what is sweeter than this wonderful memories of Bhagwan? For example, you said acceptance, laughter. So, which of his teachings has most impacted you? Being myself. And that is a teaching Bhagwan has always given us. Be yourself. Take responsibility. Freedom doesn't come without responsibility. No yoga exercise or no meditation is going to bring you freedom without taking responsibility. So now we will move to the rapid fire. It was amazing listening to you because I am a big fan of Osho and I read him a lot. I loved his teachings and we did interact once online but to interact with you uh, physically was uh, an amazing experience. So now we'll move to the rapid fire. So now we are moving to the rapid fire with Manan Sheila. Aapke hisab se inner self-awareness journey shuru karne ke liye sabse important kya hai? Love. नेगेटिव इमोशन जैसे गुस्सा या उदासी से डील करने के लिए क्या आप सजेस्ट करेंगे? There's no reason to have anger, so I wouldn't even think about it. मेंटल हेल्थ के लिए कोई हैबिट या कोई प्रैक्टिस आप सजेस्ट कर सकें लोगों को? Be yourself, don't be afraid, move in life, not in competition. And expectations. That's true. Expectations will always bring disappointment. True. Disappointment always will bring depression. Avoid the whole chain. Spiritual growth or daily life responsibilities ke beech mein kaise koi balance rakh sakta hai? If you have to have a balance for your spirituality, let me be rude. <laughs> what is this nonsense of spirituality? If someone feels in spiritual journey mein overwhelmed, then what do you advise them? Because many times, so many questions people are asking and they get overwhelmed and stressed by their own spirituality. So. They overwhelm themselves because they are not spiritual. When you feel overwhelmed, you, you are working with your fantasies uh, for comparison with other people. So stop comparing. If you 
यू आर वॉट यू आर अपने एक्सपीरियंस से सेल्फ कंपेशन डेवलप करने का इफेक्टिव तरीका क्या है इफ समी अपसेट्स यू डोंट रिएक्ट बी चंद्रस अगर आप रजनीश मूवमेंट में नहीं होती तो आप क्या कर रही होती आई वुड हैव बीन आर्टिस्ट अ पॉटर स्पिरिचुअल कॉन्टेक्स्ट में आपके लिए सक्सेस का क्या मतलब है सक्सेस एंड स्पिरिचुअलिटी कैन नॉट एग्जिस्ट टुगेदर सो इट्स नॉट स्पिरिचुअल लोगों के बारे में आपने सबसे ज्यादा सरप्राइजिंग चीज क्या सीखी है अपनी इस पूरी जर्नी में ह्यूमन नेचर के बारे में सबसे ज्यादा सरप्राइजिंग चीज फॉलिंग इन लव फॉलिंग डाउन कमिंग अप अगेन एंड वॉकिंग अगेन वट डू यू थिंक इज द पर्पज ऑफ लाइफ दिस नो पर्पज यू जस्ट हैव टू लिव यू आर बॉर्न यू गो टू स्टे अराउंड टिल यू डाई एंड वट इज एनलाइटनमेंट अकॉर्डिंग टू यू दस एन एग्जिस्ट so many people say that osho was enlightened or buddha we, was enlightened we were What? selling enlightenment okay same as egyptians were selling paradise in heaven is it like the so many people talking about enlightenment so they have is that an intangible product they have created and trying to sell it is it like that it is a product non tangible yet you want to have it and you can't trade it it is if you are enlightened you are enlightened okay no big deal so for enlightened person it doesn't exist but if you need to sell your uh for your survival you can sell it good because it's non tangible it's a good product and uh, is it necessary to have a guru in a spiritual journey I didn't go to Bhagwan looking for a guru or anything like that or enlightenment either. <laughs> I went with my father to visit. Father said, "You will learn a lot if you listen to this man." So before moving on to uh, ending and wrapping up this session, any last lesson that you would like to give to our viewers? I want to say be intelligent. spirituality yoga these that other techniques they are fashion in the moment enjoy the fashion but bear in mind which fashion suits you if it doesn't suit you and you copy you will be disappointed mm-hmm.